Hello everyone, welcome to my messy studio. My name is Mark, and I'm an artist, an art professor, and a fountain pen junkie who hoards them and on occasion uses them to draw. In this video, we're going to look at this pen, the Asveen V200, from an artist's perspective. Let's get started. Asveen is a Chinese pen company that has been on an impressive run recently with pens like the V126, a well-built vacuum filler that comes in a variety of handsome finishes modeled on the Pilot A23 and the P36, a piston filler modeled on the Conid king size bulk filler. The V200 is another design knockoff, this time of the Conid king size flat top. We'll leave the discussion of the ethics of knocking off original designs for a different video, but in the same way that the Wing Sun 630 is not a competitor to the Mont Blanc 149, this Asvine pen will not harm the sales of Conid pens, and we should not feel guilty for buying it. Let's take a look at the pen body. This is quite a large pen, and since I have the Wing Sun 630 out, again, which is identical to the Mont Blanc 149, let's compare the two. And here it is next to a much smaller Pilot Metropolitan. The pen measures 5 and 3 quarters inches, or 14.5 centimeters capped, and then 5 and 3 eighths inches, or 13 and a half centimeters uncapped. The pen doesn't really post, but given its length, you don't really want it to. The hourglass shaped grip section is made of titanium and has a very fine radial knurling that gives it a nice grippiness. This is very welcome since I find pens with metal sections to be very slick. The length, texture, and shape of this grip make it very comfortable to hold, and the cap threads are low profile and well polished so they don't catch against the fingers. The thickness of the barrel is only a little wider than the grip section, allowing you to move your fingers up and down for different kinds of strokes. This pen sits very comfortably in the hand. The large metal piston knob gives the pen a slight back heaviness, but because the pen isn't very long, it doesn't present a problem. Overall, in terms of ergonomics, a very good design. The pen uses a vacuum filling mechanism, which is one of my favorite filling systems because of the incapacity and security of travel. It's also very easy to fully disassemble and clean. The pen comes with this little wrench that unscrews the knob and then everything pulls out and easily goes back in. This is a huge advantage over piston fillers that are often complicated to put back together. Another feature that helps greatly with ease of cleaning is that the grip section unscrews, something you sadly can't do with a Pilot A23. This feature also allows you to fill this pen with a syringe which is, again, a huge advantage since built-in filling mechanisms require you to have enough ink to completely submerge the nib, whereas filling with a syringe allows you to use the very last drop of ink from the bottom of the bottle. Another thing that helps with ease of cleaning is that the nib and feed pull right out instead of being in a housing unit. Not only does that make cleaning easier, it also allows you to use this pen as a nib holder, easily switching nibs in and out. For a pen in the $50 price point, the build quality here is exceptional, with smooth threading, perfect alignment of the cap rings, and lack of jiggle in the piston knob, all giving the impression of a sturdy, well-built pen. And though I usually don't make aesthetics a big part of my pen reviews, it needs to be mentioned just what a handsome pen this is, though the credit needs to go to Conid for the design and not Asphine, who just ripped it off. The pleasing proportions, combined with the brushed titanium and clear acrylic, makes for a stunning conversation starter. This pen uses number six size nibs, which is great because you can switch them out with many other nib options. And like other Asphine models, you can buy this pen with either an Asphine nib or a nib made by Bach for a little bit more money. Since I have an Asphine number six nib from another pen, I'm going to show you how both the Asphine and the Bach nibs perform in this pen in my series of patented tests which we're going to get to right now. As always, I'm working on Strathmore Bristol paper here and have filled my pen with Noodler's Lexington Gray. The transparency of the sink allows me to better gauge the wetness of the pen. Here's a test with an extra fine Bach nib. In the consistency test, as expected with this precision made German nib, we have perfect performance with the pen putting down an unbroken line in every direction and at every speed. Notice that the line is quite light, indicating that the pen writes on the dry side. This is where using Noodler's Lexington Gray is so useful, since in a wetter pen the line would appear much darker. The drier writing is fine for me, since I often use a drawing style that relies on it. 
In the flex department, the pen shows itself to have a touch of line variation with a little bit of pressure. Most fountain pens will yield some line variation when pressed, which is why I use them more often than other kinds of pens. But Bach nibs are some of the softest steel non-flex nibs on the market, to the point where they can be considered just short of semi-flex. This is why I actually prefer them over Bach's main competitor, Yovo. In reverse writing, the pen works quite well, putting down an extra, extra fine line. So, overall, the line variation here is nice and noticeable, and the, since the nib is fairly stiff, easy to control. In the flex rating, I'll give this pen a 3, not quite semi-flex, which starts at a 4, but close. In the feedback test, we have a pen with a pleasant touch of feedback, a slight drag without feeling at all scratchy. This makes the pen well suited for a variety of different surfaces, where it'll glide over papers that would cause problems for scratchier pens. In the wetness department, it depends on whether you're pressing down or not. With no pressure, the line is quite dry, as already suggested by the lightness of the lines. But when you press down, the flow becomes fairly wet, like it would be in a semi-flex pen. This is a good thing because it shows that the feed is well adapted to providing adequate ink flow when it's needed. Now let's do the same test with the Asvin nib. This is where I find the Chinese manufacturers, despite their tremendous progress in manufacturing well-built, affordable pen bodies, are still lagging behind. In the consistency test, this one did not perform as well as the Bach nib, with significant skipping. This didn't occur in every direction, and it's possible that it might perform better on a different paper or with a different ink. But this kind of skipping is very common in many of the Chinese pens I've used over the years, so I'm not going to retest it. In the flex department, the Asphine nib is noticeably stiffer than the Bach, but with extra pressure yielded similar line variation. Like the Bach nib, the difference in line weight is noticeable and provides an elegant line that is great for a variety of drawing styles. In reverse writing, however, it was too scratchy to use. So, in my line variation rating, while ultimately the line variation was similar to the Bach, I knocked it down a quarter of a point for the additional pressure required, earning this nib a 2.75. In the feedback test, this nib is slightly scratchier than the Bach, nothing unpleasant, but definitely noticeable. And in the wetness test, the nib was identical to the Bach, which is no surprise, since the feed it uses is the same. So, besides the faulty performance in the consistency test, the nibs are comparable, and if the Asphi nib didn't have that flaw, it would actually be nice to draw with. Perhaps if I placed another Asphi nib in it, it would do better. But that's really why you're paying an extra $10 for a Bach. In the majority of cases, when you buy a Bach nib, it'll perform without problems, where it seems like with Chinese nibs, while they can be great, there's a greater risk that they'll be a dud. That said, here's what I recommend. If you don't care that the Bach nib is a little bouncier and a little smoother and wish to live dangerously, opt for the Asphian nib. If it works great, great, you just save yourself $10. And if it doesn't, you can always buy a separate Bach nib for it. Let's take this pen through the ultimate test and draw with it using the Bach nib. And as I draw, I will make my concluding remarks. Before I began this test, it seemed to me that with this V200 model, Asphine has really hit it out of the park, producing a well-built, reasonably priced pen body with everything an artist could need in a pen. We have a large, well-balanced pen with a vacuum filling system with huge ink capacity and security of transport. We have a pen that's super easy to clean, since you can open it from both ends. And we have a pull-out nib and feed, which again makes cleaning a cinch and also allows you to quickly switch out nibs. As I see it, an artist, or actually anyone focused on the practical aspects of using a fountain pen, needs to have two broad categories of pens in their arsenal. In the first category, you have pens with very special nibs that only work in pens designed to hold them. The nibs on such pens are special in some way and are perfectly designed to work with that specific pen. In that category falls vintage flex pens, or modern pens like Pilot that have proprietary nibs and feeds. Such pens are very special, especially if you find that perfect combination, a pen with a fantastic body paired with a terrific nib. But then there are pens that I call nib holders, which come in number 5 and number 6 varieties. Such pens have very well built pen bodies, and since they use Yovo or Bach nibs, are compatible with a huge number of other options.
Such pens, at least in my case, don't keep any one nib for very long. The Asphine V200 belongs in this extremely useful category. For example, here's just one nib I can use in this pen. This excellent FPR Revolution No. 6 Ultraflex nib. For some miraculous reason, it works without any adjustment to the original plastic feed, and it puts down flex lines even at speed without railroading. Unfortunately, once I actually spent some serious time drawing with this pen, my high estimation of it dropped. It drew fine for a time, perhaps a little bit drier than I would like, but fine. But then the line became wetter and wetter, and then to my horror and disappointment, the pen dripped on me. At first I thought this was an anomaly. I wiped the nib and continued drawing, and then the same thing happened. The line became wetter and wetter, and, already anticipating a drip, I took the pen away from the paper, looked at it, and saw a large drop of ink forming on the feet, ready to ruin my drawing. With the piston knob closed, the dripping diminished, but still happened on occasion. This is a fatal flaw in a pen, and no matter how much I love the pen body, it'll keep me from ever using it again. Into the drawer to collect dust, this pen goes. My disappointing experience speaks to the fact that it's generally good practice to avoid buying the first generation of a pen when it first comes out. While this may be an anomaly, it's also a sign of poor quality control. Asphine has producing an avalanche of new pen designs lately, and it seems like they issue a new pen every other month. It may be in the rush to release more and more products that they're not spending enough time fully testing their designs. To be fair, this criticism is not limited to Asphine, and in the last year, I received trippy, leaky pens from a number of young enterprising companies that are overly focused on putting out cool new designs without taking enough care to make sure that their products actually work well. So, to conclude, this could have been a fantastic pen, and still could be if the dripping issue is resolved. I'm always on the lookout for a well-built, super versatile number 6 nib holder to not only use, but to recommend to other artists. This one is just not quite there yet, but I'll definitely be on the lookout to see if they issue an improved second generation model. I hope all of you found this review useful, and if you're new to my channel, please subscribe and stay tuned to more reviews of fountain pens from an artist's perspective. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you back here in my messy studio very soon. Bye bye.